um, just waiting for everyone um, for people to come online and we will start in about five minutes. Hi Neil, hi JJ. good to see you. You're up nice and early everyone. Hey, can you do a thumbs up uh, if you can hear me clearly? We're going uh, live in about five minutes, so um, I'll just uh, wait until then. Um, hope you guys have had a good sleep. Um, it's a, going to be an absolutely beautiful day here. Hi, Neil. <laughs> um, it's going to be a beautiful day here, and I'm so excited um, to have beautiful sunshine and uh, just to get the day on the way with some positivity. Have you all got a cup of uh, coffee, cup of tea? just for while you're waiting. I'm just gonna play around with this because I think it's really fun. <laughs> just to get you started, first thing this morning. <laughs> Hi Terry, it's still AM there, correct? It's nine o'clock here, Terry, so, um, uh, where <laughs> I wish Australia wouldn't do this uh, this um, daylight saving because it's so confusing. Um, uh, so uh, I'm I'm just over the border. So where yeah, it, nine o'clock in New South Wales, Queensland we've got eight o'clock. So it's incredibly confusing. So yes, I'm here at eight, um, and everywhere else nine o'clock. So now we're about to start. Um, I think that um, you know, obviously, we can we can wait until uh, there are more people uh, coming online. So, but um, but you guys are up and Adam and got your day on the way. If you've got kids, you've already given them breakfast, so that's great. Um, probably one of the the main things that I wanted to talk about first of all is I think everyone is really concerned about what's happening with China. So I thought I might just sort of share a few things. Now I know it's not nine, uh, nine o'clock, eight o'clock um, uh, for some people yet, but, um, but I just will sort of give you a bit of an, uh, a, um, an update on um, what, what we went through in, um, in Shanghai with the um, coronavirus. Um, and just sort of how I feel like it's impacting us and um, how it actually is going to give opportunity to um, a number of companies. So I'm, I'm really excited that you guys are joining me. Um, maybe next time, if you think that this is not a good time, then please do let me know. And, um, and if you think that, you know, we should do this sort of later in the afternoon or in the evening, then, um, then we can also do that. Um, I know that we've got uh, quite a few people from the UK, UK Trade, they're having a lot of um, problems themselves and um, they also want to watch in. So I might do one in the evening as well. Anyway, so um, just uh, for anyone that's coming online now, I'm just going to tell you my experience. So when coronavirus hit, 
I was in Shanghai and we had Chinese New Year and what happened was Chinese New Year meant that everything was already shut down so and generally it's shut down for about two weeks schools are shut down for at least two months because that's their big middle of the year holiday so um, so when everything happened uh, we were already staying indoors and, and that was the big thing is and I think really one of the reasons why things sort of seemed like um, we really nipped it in the bud in China and it was because what happened was everyone was indoors naturally we all decided we wouldn't go out and visit friends and family which we would do during Chinese New Year so what we ended up doing is we um, stayed indoors and, um, and and we really locked ourselves down and especially with uh, Wuhan escalating it got really um, quite it got very bad there and they weren't allowed to leave their house now we were allowed to leave our house but Chinese people were basically saying no nope, we're not gonna leave um, the only time I got really um, that I sort of got a little bit of a feeling of like oh you know I hope this is not going to become dangerous and that was that once I tried to put in an order for some food um, and it was on a, a site that was sort of more like an international website I had international food and um, and although I could put my order in they would not deliver until two to three days later which for us we normally get if we put in an order we get it within 12 hours a lot of the time within one hour um, so it was such a shock and I was just like, you know, to my husband, I was like, oh my God, what if they stopped delivering food? So he tried on the more local um, social media, the, uh, shopping centers and things like that. And, um, and then they rang up and said, look, you know, we are delivering, but all of the things that you've ordered, which is, I think is about a hundred things, um, only one of them is available because everything else is sold out. So we kind of went, Oh God um, so I put in a few more orders so that we could uh, you know get through uh, even though that I knew that they were going to be delayed um, but after two to three days it was everything was stocked up and everything was back on um, and we were getting orders you know China is amazing um, hi Mark um, it is just absolutely amazing. The delivery time is phenomenal. And of course, when I came back to Australia, um, I what happened was the kids' schooling just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And so it was like, you know, there's no point in me staying. Why don't I take the kids back to Australia? So that's why we came back to Australia. We did our two weeks of self-isolation, which again was not that hard for us. The schools went online exactly the day that um, kids were meant to be at school. My daughter and son do eight hours of schooling every single day, um, which has taught them how to manage their time, how to get things done. And I have to say, it is absolutely amazing. But one of the things that I was really surprised of, because we we're doing self-isolation here, I put in an order with Woolworths and Coles and um, and they, the normal delivery is like one to two days and you've got to pay $15 to get it. I was like, my God, you've really got to plan ahead when you're here in Australia. So there was such a big difference for me when I came back because I come back generally for um, travel. Hi, Chris, it's so good to have you on board. Um, I love you guys. <laughs> Um, and so um, so it was just amazing for me to sort of reacquaint myself with Australia and with everything that's happening so um, that that generally is it and then I think China you know everyone says to me um, uh, you know whether or not I'm just uh, not sure that where Chris is anyway um, uh, since having come back here you know everything has escalated and we've been here now nearly eight weeks and um, our plan was to go back but then Australia closed down its borders and then we got approval from the government that we could fly back and um, that day uh, China came in with um, uh, closing down its borders so we are 
um, stuck in Australia and I will say that I'm you know I'm of course so happy to be here I'm here with um, my family and my friends even though we're doing self-isolation we can do this live broadcast so um, so that's that's a little bit of the update of what what I've gone through and um, you know I definitely look at the positive and everything that's happening and um, and it the, the one thing for me is that it's been so amazing to see my family and my friends and their businesses that they've grown and to see how quickly they're changing their businesses to deal with this. Like for instance, um, uh, my sister and brother-in-law, they've got amazing sort of um, panini and cafe bars um, called Conco, bit of a plug for them there. Um, and they're doing delivery in Melbourne, which they didn't used to do. And they're doing dinners in the nighttime, just so amazing. Um, my brother, he's got Dugan Co, which is property. And, um, and they're taking now their top uh, buyers, people that actually do have money, and they're now doing, okay, we're gonna work for you and we're gonna find you the right property because of course there's opportunity. So I wanna talk to you today about the opportunity in China. I've lived in China for 24 years and um, it has been from something so, but, what is going to happen with your regular TV commitments? I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, Terry. Um, what has happened is from um, uh, from just sort of uh, being in China and then seeing the growth of China, one of the things that I found was that Chinese consumers use mobile phones all the time. They use it for every bit of technology. We don't carry cash at all in China. Everything is done on WeChat. We pay for things on WeChat. We book things on WeChat. We, um, you know, everything is bought. Everything is delivered. Um, besides the fact that I like to go to the wet markets, I like to go to the supermarket just to have a look and see what products are around. When I'm actually buying for my house, I do everything online, I get it all delivered. And that is really the trend of what's happening. Um, for my business, for those people that may or may not know who I am and what I do, is I started out in China 24 years ago and um, I have a TV show called You Are The Chef. and um, and what I do was we would go around to all of the five-star hotels and I would cook with them. And at the time it was such, um, it's been on the air live, um, not live, sorry, it was recorded and it's um, aired every day, um, three times a day. And um, it was really such a unique thing because we used to go shopping, teach people how to buy ingredients. And then I'd get a chef a top chef from one of the five-star hotels and they would stand next to me and they would cook with me. Um, well, I should say actually, they were teaching me how to cook. I burnt so many things. Um, and Terry, to answer your question, um, what happens with my commitments, we do a lot of, um, we sort of bulk film and um, we then air it. So I, I'll work, you know, days on end and I'll do all my filming and then it gets edited, which can take up to a month, six weeks to edit the show and then it gets put up on um, TV. So for those shows, they are using back, um, they're using shows that we've already done and then also they're using, um, they're, they're gonna re-air until, you know, I can get myself back there. Um, for my live broadcast um, on national TV, of course, uh, I can't do that because that really does require um, the massive studio and of course we're live. So they are hanging out for me to be able to do that, Terry. Um, we are currently in negotiations that um, what may be doing is they may feed into me here in Australia and then especially if it's an Australian product that we're selling, um, and we're selling live, then I'll be here and promoting and talking more about, you know, how I would use that product um, to help the sales. So, um, so that that's that's uh, that's uh, how I'm working with that. But um, a lot of people know me. I then do uh, I do lots of other shows because what happened with my TV show, people were super interested in 
finding out more about my lifestyle and how I kept healthy, how I had two or three other companies that I ran, I had two children. So there was a lot more about parenting and wellness and health. And that really has been my movement now is uh, gourmet food and then also health, wellness and natural beauty. Um, and uh, very much about helping brands and this is where it's more uh, sort of appropriate for you, is helping brands take their product, whether it's a service or a, an actual physical product, and take it to Shanghai and sell to the consumer. So what I wanna do is, I think that for me, when I came back to Australia, probably about two years ago, I was really surprised that a lot of people had, um, a very um, a different view of China than what I believe China actually is. And there are so many ways to enter the China market that, you know, that things are quite confusing. So if you have a product here, then, um, uh, you know, there is, there is some very typical sort of ways that you can sell. One is directly into the supermarkets, or into very specific shops, or you can go, you know, sell on someone else's website, or you can sell on your own website. So there are similarities with that in China, except that it, there are even more ways to um, uh, to brand and place your product in China. So that's what I want to go through, and I've done a little bit of a diagram because I think that visually, this is probably going to help people. Um, uh, a lot more than me just talking about it and it's probably going to um, help you all the little things that you've heard about I want to sort of put them into context and into relationship with all the other um, things uh, that you may not have heard about so um, this is such a basic I love this is <laughs> such a basic picture um, I will go through this so that you can sort of see exactly what it is but I think this is going to help so we have you and your product and whether you are one of those amazing companies that are in um, the UK under Chris's uh, umbrella or if you're in Australia that this is where you are so this could be UK it could be Australia it could be the US it could be India um, but this is your product this here is the Chinese consumer and this is something that the Chinese consumer is what I have worked so hard um, uh, this is, I know this is going to be flipped, so this is going to be a bit hard for you to read, but just bear with me and I will take a photo and I will send this out so that you can see it. Um, so, uh, Chinese consumer, I've worked so hard, no matter what I have done in business, I've worked so hard to make sure that I'm in touch with the Chinese consumer. All of my friends pretty much in China are Chinese. I also have a company called Chef Mama, and that is where I work with the local mayor uh, in the Taupo district, and we have a community center there. We um, run health classes, cooking classes, nutrition classes, um, calligraphy classes for adults, for children, and then for the elderly. And that means that although I'm not doing all the training, I'm there constantly making sure it's been run properly. And I and I get to see, because they've got play areas, they've got dining, it means that I can really um, see what people are doing and I can talk to people of all the different generations. And, um, and I also will teach wellness classes and also cooking classes. I'll bring some of the chefs in and I'll teach how to cook, how to use pasta, how to use pasta sauce or olive oil or how to, you know, how to make a coffee. Um, so these are the things that I do and I do that so that I stay connected and also so that I'm giving back to the community. The other thing is also the live shows that I do where I'm doing either live broadcasts and we're meeting the audience or where I'm doing an event um, and I get to meet the audience. So I'm constantly out there. I go to the um, elderly people's homes where I'll do English classes with them and just get to spend the day with them and learn more about them. So it's been through that that I've stayed in contact with the Chinese consumer. And, um, and, and so that's how I know uh, this person here and that's how 
Um, I want to help you understand this consumer. So here's your product. Now, wherever you are at the moment, you're probably in your own country and you're selling to shops or you're selling online um, through computer or on the mobile phone. Now, there are a few ways to go into China. The main way that people think of is, and it's what you do mainly in uh, Australia, is you do general trade. And what happens is your product then goes straight on a boat and it comes here to China, the border, um, and this is where it goes through customs. Before you can go through customs, you have to have an importer that can actually go through this full process with you and they need to get your ingredients checks, you need to make sure you've got your IP all done, um, and they're not gonna let you go through here until that has all been organized. Now, your importer may be able to sell directly or it will get sent through to a distributor, and the distributor will send it through to multiple different shops offline, or they will sell online on their own platforms, or they will sell it on things like Taobao, Tmall, um, uh, JD, Penguin. Now, if it's sold on the national uh, sites, this still goes through customs. So it's going into the importer's warehouse or the distributor's warehouse and it's been sent there, but it's in on the China border side of things. So that is the very typical way of doing it. And that sort of, the products that I recommend with that are um, drinks, you've got your chips, your pastas, butter, um, even milk, dairy, all of those sorts of things that is just generally you eat on a day-to-day -day basis that you want to send in. Now, for anyone with hair care, skin care, beauty products, anything that you're actually putting on your body, to be able to get through this point is very difficult. For every single SKU that you have got, SKU, you need to have a license. That license is very expensive when it comes to these sorts of products. And it takes at least two to three years to get the license. I've heard that there are some companies that can speed it up, but it's still a massive process. So if you are a beauty product, if you have got, um, if you're a supplement company, like for instance, Blackmores and Swiss did not do this um, crossing the border when they started. So this is really for your, just your basic sort of food products. This is what I would suggest you could do. Um, so that's, that's the general trade. Now, there's another way that we sell, and this is one that everyone keeps talking about, and that's the Daigo market. Now, the Daigo market is, um, it became famous in Australia because it was those people that were going to Coles and Woolies and buying up all the milk powder. And so when they bought up all that milk powder, they took it home, they put it into their carport, and they had their friends in China saying, can you get me some milk powder for my baby? We don't trust the milk powder in China. I want you to send it to me. So people in Australia started sending to friends, started sending to family, and then they realized this is actually quite a good business. So what they did was they set up, so this is your Daigo here, and they saw your product in your home country. So they saw it on the shelves, they saw it being sold, they saw Australian, UK mothers and uh, people eating and using that product. So they said, this is a good product, I'm going to send it through the post to the Chinese consumer. I'm not gonna go through customs, I'm going to go completely around and send it through to the post. There's still tax on it when the, the consumer gets it, but basically these Daigo could send it around. Now then this Daigo group got very, very smart and they started setting up sites where these Chinese consumers could have a look at what products they were offering. So these products were set up on, this is where Timor and JD really got their name and it was really through the, um, uh, the international sites. So there's two different types of sites that you can get. One is a local site, and another one is an international site. And anything on those international sites is cross-border 
e-commerce and that means that it is going to come around and go to the Chinese consumer. The Daigo market is a very important one for a lot of companies. It is exactly how Blackmores and Swiss went absolutely crazy. They had a celebrity where each of them actually, I think Swiss mainly was that they had a celebrity that started using their products. They were putting it onto their local social media and people were going crazy. So they were finding it on this international social media, um, international um, shops. And that was the Daigos owned their own shops. So these are not branded by the company. They are branded and they're owned by these individual Daigo. The Daigo would then pick and pack and then they would send it to the Chinese consumer. So that's what we call cross-border e-commerce. Now, when a brand wants to do or use this, they can approach these Daigo and there are communities of Daigo and there are heads. And the reason I've done a pyramid is because there are different tiers. People that are very good at selling and people that are just coming in. So you want to try and find a, a number of different people in different tiers. You want to get these Daigo selling your product. Now, you can either give them your product and they will send it or you can, once you get the order, you as a brand will send it yourself. That's cross-border e-commerce and that is where the Daigo market comes in. It means you don't have to worry about coming through customs, you don't have to worry about any of this sort of thing here. And this is really a massive commitment because you're setting a pallet or a container of product on a boat and you're sending it into China. Now, you may have been paid for it previously or you may do it on consignment, but basically it's still a high risk. Um, and especially when you're just starting out and no one knows your brand. So the next thing is Chinese consumers are looking here, but then they're also looking on these sites here to find your product. There is also one other way of doing this and that is you set up your own Tmall or your own JD site, and that's your branded site. So if you have, um, let's let's go back to Swiss. So what happened is they had all the Daigo that were helping sell their product, and then they decided to set up their own Tmall store, and that's a fully branded one. Now you cannot do that unless Tmall agrees for you to do it. So for your self-branded uh, Tmall store, you have to get approval from Alibaba, to be able, and also from JD, to be able to put your products up on, um, or to even set up your site. It is expensive to set it up, but it's also really expensive to run it. So unless you have quite a lot of capital, it's probably not the best way to start. You wanna just start selling through other people's sites. Now these Daigo originally were in your home country. They then started setting up here and they may be living now in China, but they still have their platforms where people can buy. That's where when someone bought something, then they would recommend it to a friend and that's how they built up their followers. And some of these Daigo could be making up to a million dollars um, a month, <laughs> a, a year. Um, they're making a lot of money and they've got a lot of followers. So that is that's kind of how it is. If you are a health, beauty, wellness brand, you have anything that is not food grade product, um, I would very, very strongly suggest that you do cross-border e-commerce. Um, I'm actually setting up mine at the moment. Um, we have, I'm working with eCargo, um, as you may all know, and we actually have an e-commerce site where it's our own uh, Tmall store, and then I'm, doing offline and online events and bringing these consumers to be able to watch it. It means that we can avoid this whole China customs area. Now, if you are a company, I will send this through to you if, it, if you found that interesting. If you're a company and you are starting to think about China, like, are you ready? There are so many different ways that you can sell in China and what probably the most asked question that I get is, 
Should I use WeChat? Should I use Timor? Should I use JD? And should I use a Daigo? Um, I think the most important thing is, is that they are, you have to remember that they are channels. They are not a strategy. Um, you, just like the business that you've set up at home, it, you have to have a strategy. You have to understand what you're doing. And you can't just go, I'm going to get 1% of Australia, uh, of, the, of the China market, and I'll be fine. It just doesn't happen. The Chinese consumer is so um, discerning. They check the product. They then go and ask all their friends if they've, you know, used the product, if they know what the, the product's all about. They look on uh, Xiao Hongshu Red Book. They look on all the different social media and see how many times they've seen it. So they're really checking to see if this brand is a decent brand. They'll also then go onto your websites in your country and they'll see, you know, what are they all about. So they really are very discerning. And the other thing is, is that they also don't necessarily want your product the way that you want uh, the, the product to be used. And as an example of this was, um, I was talking to a jam company and, um, and they were saying that one of the most fascinating things that they discovered was that obviously Chinese people are probably not going to be having toast and jam in the morning, although people do nowadays, um, but that uh, what a lot of the people do is that they get a um, container of jam and especially the elderly, this is an interesting one, um, and they take a teaspoon of it and then they dip it into hot water and they um, swell it around and then they drink it. So, uh, so it, they're actually using the jam as a drink, a sweet drink for them to have. As we all know, Chinese people don't like cold um, uh, cold beverages. So um, yeah, so they're, they're, they're using it to, to drink that way. So what are some of the things that you can think about if you're wanting to look at a new place to sell your product, if you're looking at a way of expanding and also taking the opportunity where you've got time right now to actually be able to, um, to start to create a product that can sell in China. The first thing is you do need to have some sort of capital. Um, you know, when you set up your own company in Australia and the UK, you may not realize that you spent a lot of money, you may have even mortgage, put your house on, you know, mortgage your house so that you could get some sort of financing. Um, and a lot of people think that because I'm successful in my hometown, I should be able to sell in China. It's just not the fact. You know, no matter whether you are a big company, whether you're a small company, when you start in China, you are just beginning. The only difference is, is a big company may have a bit more support, but it also might have a lot more politics. Sometimes I found that the more successful companies are small to medium sized companies that just go, we are going to do this. So you do need to have some sort of financial commitment um, to do this. Um, how much? It really depends on the type of product that you've got and, um, and how you're going to sell it. I would say you do need to have at least 30 to 50,000 in cash and that should last you at least six months so that you're actually moving forward and getting stuff happening. Um, so that's the, that's the first thing. The second thing is commitment. Um, the only companies that survive in China is absolute commitment. One of the brands that I have worked with, they have, you know, from when they, they came to me, you know, one of the biggest problems was they were shipping in containers. Um, their, their chips were amazing. They were sold all over the world. When they came into um, China, it was sitting at the warehouse at the docks, trying to pass customs and it was sitting there in the summertime and what happened is um, because there was some chemical effect and then the, uh, the peroxide levels went up and then the shipment was then asked to be destroyed and sent back. Um, and 
you know, this is a massive thing. If they're the ones committing and then you've got someone, a distributor that obviously has paid for this product, who's in the wrong? You know, it's such a difficult one because um, there probably was no problem with the product when it first got shipped out. But the fact that it was sitting there too long, the heat, everything, you know, sort of came together to mean that it could not pass. The distributors that had, or the importers that had actually bought the product and paid for it said, listen, you sent me something that I can't buy, you know, that I can't use, I can't sell it to anyone, so I want my money, I'm not gonna pass over this money to you. So it's a very difficult one, you just have to be very careful, and I will suggest is just taking it easy as you go along. Um, uh, just to make sure that you know what you're doing. And that's why I personally now believe that cross-border is an amazing way to get your, um, just get your, a, a little bit of experience in China. If you have um, uh, this, the chip company wasn't fake time. <laughs> Sorry, I was just, uh, Chris is sending me a message. Um, uh, if you're selling in Australia or in the UK and you have people that love your product, you're in a really good position to get Daigo's to actually start selling your brand. And, um, and that is probably one of the best and fastest ways to really get yourself out there. Another way is approaching a company um, like eCargo or like myself where you can say is that I want you to look after your my brand I trust you we're going to work step by step and we'll give you the product um, it'll still be cross-border but that you're going to help us um, change the product the marketing the message that goes out to the consumer and that we together work as a as a team and then we start to help people to start to get a feel for the China market to start to get people you know seeing the product to get people to respond to the product what you don't necessarily uh, understand is that Chinese people when they buy they do a lot of work but not only that they also are very free with their comments um, it is not uncommon for someone to pick up a product and they love it and they do a video and they'll send it back to um, to the buyer and go love this product for this reason um, it's also not uncommon for them to I was just talking to um, a brand and um, their their packaging is beautiful um, but because of the transport through the uh, post to the consumer, what happened was the, um, the boxes were not strong enough. Um, inside was a bottle. So the consumer was going, I love this product, but look at this. Every time I grab it, you know, when I open the box, the, the product nearly, you know, sort of fell out and it was about to smash on the ground. Some people had it that it actually did smash on the ground. So this was like, we like the product, but we don't like the outside box that it's put into. You're not going to know that until you start to sell. And that's why it's a great way to just start cross-border. Now, when we talk about cross-border e-commerce, the other word that is used a lot is longevity, yes. Thank you, Jason. Um, uh, is uh, With cross-border is the bonded warehouse. What does that mean? Okay. Um, if you are going to sell cross-border and you've got someone that is helping you sell it, let's say, for instance, myself. If I'm going to help you sell it, we have warehouses in Australia, in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, where you can deliver your product and leave it there. When the consumer buys on our platform in China, we then get it sent from Australia, from the warehouse that it is, and it gets sent out. That's a great way to start because if you're in Sydney, Melbourne, or New Zealand, or uh, Brisbane, then you can send a small amount, like you can send like a container you know, of product. You can send a pallet and it can be sitting there. It also means that if it doesn't get sold, you can just pick it up and it can be brought back to you. So that is, that's still not going over the border. So then there is another where you've got your bonded warehouses in the country. Now, although it's in the country, so for instance, it's in Shanghai, 
it sits in the bonded warehouse and it is not passing through customs. So it's a warehouse. So you've got Australia, China, customs, and China is still here. Your customs is here. You are sitting right here on in this China area, but it hasn't gone through the customs. So what happens is from that bonded warehouse in China, it can be sent out by post, like international post, and it can be sent to the consumer. Why is that amazing? Because when you send stuff to Shanghai or to Beijing or to Guangzhou, you have got product in the country, but not passing customs. So it means that when someone puts an order in, they will receive it within a day, 24 hours. If it's still in Australia, they may get it within three to four days, maybe five days, depending on <laughs> if Australia Post is doing a good job. So, uh, so it really just depends on that speed of uh, when the person gets it. Now, if it's a product that people are going to be, like for instance, milk powder, people are going to pay for that in advance. They're okay to wait for it because they're going to know, okay, I've got two containers left, send it in, not a problem. You know, I know that this will last me for another month. And then when this product comes in, then I'll start to use it. But there are products with uh, like soap and hand cream and um, face cream that um, the people want really quickly. And that's the, that's the sort of time that you would want to take a, um, a pallet of your products and then you would want to put it in the bonded warehouse in the country in China where, um, and again, it depends on where your most biggest sellers are. It could be in Guangzhou, um, Chengdu, Shanghai, and it sits there and when that consumer wants it, then it gets delivered to them very, very quickly. Chinese people are used to getting some things like within hours, as I said. So you really want to make sure that you get the product in as quickly as possible. So the steps that I would take if you're a new brand and you're going, I'm going to do this, I've got the cash for the next, definitely for the next six months. And I want to take that next step. And I am completely committed to have someone working on it. I'm going to find the right team in China and I'm going to work with them. That, that Once you've got that down, then you need to have someone, um, and as I said, um, anyone that's online, I am actually going to do a China strategy, five China strategies for um, companies for free. Normally I charge $500 for this session. Um, and after this, I will actually post, you can go to my website, www.heididugan.com and you can actually log in, fill in your details, and I will choose five companies this week that I will go through your specific details and see what is the best way, how can you do it? Um, because when you enter China, there has to be a strategy, and that strategy is going to change after three months, after six months, after one year. It's not ever going to be one strategy. So my, as a sort of a blanket strategy for a small business that is still very unsure of what, um, you know, whether, whether China is the right thing or, um, you know, whether their product will be received right, or is the packaging correct? I would say that do a strategy session with someone that knows what they're talking about that is still in China, that works in China. Um, it's so valuable. Start off with your cross-border e-commerce, get people to really understand what the product is and really you can understand the consumer. You'll get so much feedback and people will be able to tell you, you know, uh, I love this or I don't like this or how do I use this? You'll start to get all your marketing information ready based on that feedback. You might get only a few sales. But just like we say Chinese whispers, it really is when you have a product that Chinese people start to love and that really feel that they can associate with that and that you care about them. Ultimately, that's got to be, it's got to be a product where you care about them and that you're really trying to, um, to help them improve their life. They will pick up on that and, um, and start to do that. Start to work out, wow, after three months, four months, five months, 
this product just went from selling a hundred products per month to a thousand to five thousand and this is again you don't know who's going to pick it up who's going to blast it out on their social media on little red and it could give you the you know the real sort of push that you're looking for you at that stage can decide you know what i'm going to set up my own store i'm going to set up my own Tmall store and i'm going to really put the money behind it now you do need to be very careful with that and the reason for that is because companies like swiss and uh, blackmores had some problems with it because the perception of a product coming in from overseas um, this is an Australian product it's green and now it's been sold in China is this real um, is this made just for us uh, there may be some backlash and people may not want it and that's the same from going cross-border into main general trade they've loved the product they've trusted your product they're used to buying it in a specific way the die go is selling it and then you decide to go general trade and you see your business just start going down and that it may be just for a period of time where you start to pick it up again and maybe because the die go going well if these consumers can get it in china themselves then why would i bother selling it i'm going to pick up another brand so they will drop your brand um, if you have already got your own Timor, you can start to push that and you can start to really promote it um, and, and you can move into the general trade. With that, just be very, very careful. Um, there are sort of main areas that you can do general trade and that is your supermarkets. Each supermarket has a different clientele. It's not like Coles and Woolworths where you've got young kids to the elderly all going there. You've got uh, supermarkets like Yonghui, um, whose clientele is really 50, 52, 53 upwards. And any of the young people wouldn't, wouldn't even dream of going there. Um, then you've got places like Herma, it's the, um, hi, um, the little hippo, and that's owned by Alibaba. And they are really uh, smaller supermarkets have got really your daily needs. And you've got all those white collar workers, the young people that go there. They go there, they experience it. You put your stuff into a bag, um, into a, a trolley. It get You pay for it and then it goes, it gets lifted up into the roof. And as you're walking in, you can see these um, baskets being sort of trolleyed like a sushi train all the way around the shop and then they're going down and then by the time you've got home they've already delivered it um, pretty amazing so that is much more the younger market so you have to know exactly where you're going to sell and who you're selling to and that is the reason that that is so important is because the message will be completely different if I'm selling to an older person um, uh, you know there is a very specific sort of mindset that they have that you want to sell to them now if you are selling something to a child remember that you're not actually selling to the child you are probably selling to their parent but in China you're also selling to their grandparent so this is where it can become uh, quite confusing and that's why it's so important to have someone on board that knows China that is someone that you can trust don't do this this is one of the things that I hear most is that a company comes to me and goes I've got a distributor I'm like oh great we're sending in our first shipment okay and I know that two to three four months later that they will come back to me and they will I will say how did things go and they go well we sent in our first shipment um, and we didn't hear from them again and no doubt what's happened is their products have been dumped, they didn't know how to sell it properly, and they've, they've either been price cut down, um, they've you know, reduced prices that you know, people are selling them for different prices, they've gone expired and they've been thrown out and they will have damaged their brand and they will have also um, uh, not got any other business from it. Um, the, I would say about 60 to 70 people um, 70% of um, companies that come to me uh, tell me that that is the situation or that they say that they have a distributor that they're working very very closely with the distributor is amazing and they're doing all their marketing for them uh, you you're giving 
your branding and your marketing to a distributor. Now, this always has struck, struck me as something really unusual because if you're in your own hometown and you get a distributor, they're going to send it out, but they're not going to be marketing and doing your message. They're distributing. They're literally getting it into the shops. But you're the one that needs to be sending that message out. You need to be doing all that marketing. Now, you would, in your own home country, you would be working so hard to do that. So I don't understand why you would give um, your brand and your marketing to a distributor who has absolutely no idea about branding and marketing and they also don't know your product very well. So you need to make sure that whoever you're working with, that there's someone that just helps you, whether you have someone stationed in China, which a lot of the big companies do, they'll have someone, they'll have a little office or they'll have one person that lives in China and that works on their behalf and that liaises with all their distributors, with their marketing companies and make sure that everything is in line. So, um, that I'm going to just sort of leave it there. Uh, as I said, the you know I am going to go through strategy, um, China entry strategy with people, um, five companies. I'm going to do it for you for free. You can go to um, my website HeidiDugan.com. H e i d i d u g a n dot com and uh, you can have a look there and we will also the exact link where you can fill in the form if you would like to be one of those five companies we'll send that out in just a moment on my post um but uh, it, you know even if you're not one of those companies please you know do feel free to reach out to me uh china has got such amazing opportunities and the, even though i've just gone through all of these different options of ways that you can come into China. The whole thing is, is that don't be frightened by all of that information because you're not going to use all of those things. What you wanna do is you want to make everything so super simple. You want to just decide on what are you going to do? What is this one line that you're going to take? And then at each point you're going to take a, put, lift your head up and go, okay, is this the right decision? Do I have to change? Do I have to alter my direction and the way that I'm doing it? Do I have to change my marketing message? Um, and so just to have someone guide you through that will, will make a massive difference just to help you get clarity. And also just to see if your product is the right product for China as well. Although I have to say, I do believe you can sell rice to Chinese people. The Japanese do. Chinese people go to Japan to buy Japanese rice and to buy rice cookers. Now, if they can sell to China, then we can sell pretty much anything too. But it's about really letting them make it their own, let them take it into their home the way that they want it, let them use it the way that they want to use it. And then you provide that love, that care, that support, that um, interaction, with the different um, uh, consumers and, um, and that's how you build the brand. Remember, no matter whether you are in China, whether you're in your own home country, that you are only ever selling to one person at a time. So when you're doing your marketing, when you're thinking of this, who is that consumer? Who is that one person? How do you get your product into their hands? If China is something that you would like to look at, remember that you can uh, um, you can send me a message, you can go to my website, you can find out a little bit more of what I'm doing. Um, and if you wanna be one of those five companies, you can also uh, go on and see, uh, fill in your details and then I'll take a look. I'll make a choice of um, which companies I think that will need the most help and, uh, and I'll, I'll uh, do that. If anyone has any questions now, um, I am going to take them. I don't know if anyone has a question whilst I'm doing that, just for the next five, 10 minutes. If um, is there any questions? Um, I will do like a bit of a shout out to, um, uh, to Chris Hewitt, um, who looks after um, uh, food and beverage for Northern UK. Um, amazing, everyone in the world is really feeling it and they've got a lot of great products. 
the same with um, people in Victoria, you know, thank you so much. Thanks, Jason. Um, any questions? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Vicky. Cool. Well, I think, um, okay, well, if no one has any other questions, I'm going to leave it at that. I am going to continue. If you've got other questions, what about those in China like us? We normally export from China. Uh, okay. Um, so Terry, I'm not sure what, like, I'm not completely sure what that question is. Um, what about those in China like us? We normally export from China. So, um, are you saying, uh, are there companies that want to sell to Australia? I, there are definitely lots of uh, products. Uh, one thing I will say, actually, we will see a growth in China made products over the next, um, uh, over the next few years. China is really doing a big push, um, for that, um, connection list. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Plenty of questions, but too many for now. Okay. Um, all right, then send them. Sorry, guys. Uh, I, I will send you, um, if, if you just email me, if you've got some questions or if you would like some sort of uh, contact, if you're already dealing in China and there are a lot of the brands, what happens is they're already dealing in China. They've got marketing company, they've got a distributor, um, they've got a number of things, but they can't keep in contact with them and their um, country head is based in Australia, which makes it super difficult. So well, what sometimes happens is companies will actually get me to consult for them where I am based in China and I talk with their distributors, I talk with their marketing people on behalf of them so that I'm their team member in China and I can help sort of uh, uh, smooth that whole process down. Um, uh, if you are making in China, I think um, Terry got it already making in China. If you're selling in China um, and your product is um, is for the China market, then you don't have to go through any of that custom sort of thing. Then you are general trade. Terry, I'd love to hear more about what product you've got because if you are general trade, then um, and it's a product that a lot of consumers would like, I do live broadcast on national TV and um, we pick some amazing brands and we actually sell live on TV and that's one of the main things. I'm the only foreigner in China that has the license to be able to be live broadcast on TV um, and so that's why I'm doing a lot with them with their foreign products and I'm also helping companies take those products. Um, through the whole TV sort of uh, the approval system and then um, through to designing the show and then selling. So Terry, if you've got something in made in China that you want to sell to the Chinese people that you think would be appropriate for online TV, definitely drop me a line and we can have a chat about it. If any of the other companies have a product that is general trade, we cannot do it through cross-border, then um, uh, uh, then we can um, uh, we can uh, also sell online. Terry, I think maybe we need to have another conversation because I, you know, I I need to sort of understand more about what uh, what you're wanting. So um, uh, let's uh, tee up a time that we can have a chat. Um, thanks, guys. Um, fantastic. Uh, okay, uh, hi. You can sign up for our call. You can go to this link below um i'm just going to get ellen ellen might send a link let me actually i'm going to put a photo in i'll see if i can add a photo here so that you can no nope, i've forgotten how to do this oh here it is i'm going to send for our instagram no nope, wait up Oh, I don't know. I'm going to send it out. I knew how to send it out before. Oh, here we go. Um, for Facebook, uh, for Facebook, you can see that um, we've just set um, all the uh, sign in. It's HeidiDugan.com forward slash ready dash for dash China dash market. Um, if you don't have that, don't worry. We're going to put it in um, for Instagram people. But you can also just go to our website and you'll find it there. Have a great day, guys, and um, keep pushing forward. Have an amazing day. Please, this is not the time to pull back and get scared. 
just go forward and um, make the most of everything that you've done. Um, stay positive. Um, I certainly am. And, uh, you know, the opportunities that are to have, you know, nowadays in the world, it's kind of leveled the playing field. So um, get out there and kick ass.